let me say thank you for still being there listening to rock city 101.9 fm here in the city of abekta indeed we are the voice of the people daybreak show that's the program and citizens forum that's the segment where we look critically intelligently academically at issues surrounding us national tropical and sometimes it could be international issues but trust us we tear them down and let you understand the realities of such issues yes that's what we will be focusing we'll be doing this morning uh, on the program we'll be looking at the education all right well different stories around the education sector um a lot of people have queried the progression uh, we've made in the success rate of our students the learning ability and of course the understanding of issues being taught in the schools um not too long ago some days ago another announcement came up from the policy makers urging us or informing us that there's that likelihood they are planning to have these subjects taught in local languages maybe that will help the student to assimilate quickly what they have been taught in schools for those of you who have them you know the rate in which they understand the, the lyrics of songs the rate in which they master the computers um, and of course some have also said even the so-called local language many of them cannot speak fluently they do not communicate well in local language there are issues around this uh, surrounding this it may not be as easy as i've just uh, mentioned it how many dialects how many local languages we have in the country that's a question how many do we even have here in Ogo state uh, for instance i claim to be a yoruba man but um, believe it each time i go to a jebu and the jebu man is speaking it's something else i sometimes do need an interpreter or ask people what is he or she uh, saying and then uh, for sure if you come to a good land you know what uh, that means so for instance if i have a student uh, who has been taught in the Egun, and then he wants to work in the, as close as the land what will happen but on the other hand it's not unlikely that such a student will pick up that subject being taught immediately but another thing is this how do we teach the physics in Yoruba or Igbo, uh, so to say. <laughs> How do you teach chemistry? Well, that has not been mentioned. All it's right. only mathematics and science. Okay, of but course, you can it, teach it, chemistry it, it, and physics. No, well, when you say science, <laughs> so eventually, these are some of the complex issues we may run into when we are attempting. And one to more thing, this. too, it will restrict the movement of teachers to restrict their movement. That means if we have in the southwest Igbo teachers, they won't be able to fit in. They have to go back to their villages to be able to fit in there. But which of these languages would we even stick to? All right, so those are issues we will attempt to clarify uh, this morning as we have uh, a core teacher here, thorough teacher, our uh, thoroughly bred, uh, so to say, uh, teaching, as you would like to say has been a water uh, that she's been drinking uh, for ages. So uh, let me welcome to the program, Dr. Bola Ige. Good morning, madam. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm sure you have heard this intro um, and the news coming in. Yes. Um, as a teacher, what were your first thoughts? OK, thank you. Um, I'm going to start from where you where you stopped looking at language language let me start by saying that language is very very important in learning it's a vital aspect because um it is a language of education at the same time it's a language in which you also learn it but looking at the nigerian situation nigeria is a multilingual uh, nation i agreed about that just even based on what you have said so many scholars have looked at numbers of languages that we have in nigeria some have put them as maybe 450, 300. But one thing is sure that we have more than 300 local languages in Nigeria. But out of these languages, 
three major languages have been recognized in Nigeria as the mother tongue, Yoruba, Igbo, and Hausa. It is important for us to start from this foundation, to start from this basis, so that we understand where we are coming from, to know where we are going. With this, because, uh, we might want to ask that, why is it that we have recognized Yoruba, Igbo, and Hausa? This is because 50% of the population of Nigeria, they speak this language, and that is why it has been recognized in the policy. However, we also discover that, apart from this mother tongue, we also have other languages in Nigeria. That's the English language. So English language in Nigeria, apart from staying as, a, staying as a foreign language, is also a second language. We look at English language as a second language in Nigeria. So when you talk about a second language, a second language is a language that has the official stamp of a nation. When it has the official stamp of a nation, that is why you teach that particular language in school. So when you have so many languages, we have, okay, we also, when you look at the national policy on education, you also have French and other languages. Mm. This French, you know, French is not a second language, it's a foreign language. It's a foreign language because it's not compulsory for us to teach in schools, just as we have, but it's, you can learn it because if you want to travel and you want to communicate with other people outside, thank you. And because we have our neighboring, you know, we have our neighbors, Put on you and what are you? Thank you. Country. So we can learn that particular language. So when you have, you, that means it's now saying that now with the Nigerian situation, we now have a situation at hand whereby we have the mother tongue. It has a role that it plays in society. We have the second language that plays a certain role in society. We also have the foreign languages. Now with the classroom, we'll go to, into the classroom now. English is taught as a subject, but remember I've told you that English is a second language because it has the official status. For instance, just as we are speaking now, we are making use of English, isn't it? When we go to the uh, mass media, administration, offices, and what have you, that is the reason why English language is taught in school. English language is not just put in schools because is a foreign language because it's a part but because it's above being a foreign language in nigeria it's a second language it's important for us to understand the foundation before we start going ahead now we also discovered that we have a national policy on education the national policy on education states that mother tongue shall be used at the initial stage of the primary education that means that the first year second year and the third year you use the mother tongue and by the fourth year you now switch to english language in teaching in the primary school so it is expected that by the time a child gets to the secondary school english automatically becomes the language of education and the mother tongue are taught the languages are taught as subjects in school but over the years we have discovered that okay people like us when we were in school people like me when i was in school we were taught like that from primary school we were able to pick english and we were able to understand what else. but as time goes on you discover that so Things changed, and you saw that even primary students, even secondary students now, cannot speak the English language. I think that might be the reason why people that were thinking that we now have to change into our mother tongue, and this and that and that are saying that. So we have to understand the basis. But however, we have to be cautious of this particular language. This because remember, I told you that English has the official stamp. English has the official stamp, that means official status. Is that it has the recognition of the nation as the official language of the nation. So if you now introduce in if you now in, if you if you teach with the mother tongue, good is good because in fact the issue of teaching with mother tongue is not a new thing because we have to look at the past for us to understand the present and know the future. 1976 if six projects uh, uh, if a six years project was conducted at the University of Ife where Yoruba was used throughout the primary education system for the particular for the for and English was taught as a subject. So at that time, in the 70s, before the policy now came in 1976, that was when we had the first national policy on education. You discover that parents, a lot of parents were against it, that they would not want their children to be taught in the mother tongue. And it was at that time that we now, now started having all these primary schools. Um, thank you. Speaking English thing. That's how now people started having private primary schools, established private primary schools where students will now start to teach in English. And that is what is leading us to where we are. And a local language. And local language. Thank you. We don't, even, we, not even refer, we don't even refer to it as vernacular because I want to also observe that learning in the mother tongue has also its own advantages. You understand? Because um, it has, you, you learn English language, from that English language, now you saw that, if I, in the 18, 1813 or something like that one, 
Yoruba language was used for in classroom. So it's not a thing that um, that is new that we should not use Yoruba. But what I'm saying in what I'm saying with this one is that all these languages that we have identified, be it mother tongue, be it second language, they all have the roles that they play, and one should not be jettisoned for, for the other because it's going to backfire. Because if you are teaching me in the mother tongue, science in the mother tongue, how many science textbooks do you have in the math? I, I told you that that particular project started in 1976, teaching the mother tongue and what have you. But going to the market now, do you have any mathematics textbook in the market? Do you have any science textbook in the market? Do you have any um, uh, science textbook in the market? Basic concept, have we been able to come out with what we call um, uh, um, uh, plus, minus? Arupo, Ayokuro, those are the things that we still use all this well. Have we been able to come out with certain concepts that we'll, that we'll use in science, in chemistry, in biology, in textbook? Most of the mother tongue textbooks that we have in the bookshops now, they are in um, literature, telling us about our story, telling us where we are coming from, and so on and so forth. Not, not, in, when, the teaching not in the teaching area. So, what you have in schools now is that you have teachers. Even at the at the junior primary, because the intention of the national policy before that, when they had that one, is to help the book writers to produce textbooks in the area of the mother tongue. As such, it will improve the model. It will improve them. But when you get to the schools now, at least I was still in some schools, private school, uh, public schools and private schools last week on teaching practice, they discover that teachers will use English textbook and will translate into English. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Use so, English, I don't. Use then you English. use English textbooks and translate into the mother tongue okay. as you are teaching the, the. But you are so you are expected to have you are at this stage now, maybe 76 now, like 41 years after the national policy on education that came. We are supposed to have had now textbooks in the mother tongue, textbooks in mathematics, textbooks in um, not direct elementary. Yes, so that students will have what to read even when they leave school. But now. We like to we want to have a policy now. We are talking about this. We want to go into mother tongue. Do we have these textbooks in place? Do we have the textbooks that we are going in mother tongue that we're going to use to, to teach these students? Where are we starting from? Do we have this textbook in primary school that we want to start? Do we have this textbook in secondary school that we want to? Are we saying that it's only by teacher speaking to me that I have to read? Don't I, don't I have the right to have textbook that I can read on my own and study on my own in the mother tongue? I think we still need a lot of work to do on the area of mother tongue, in the in the area of mother tongue. Before then, another thing that uh, we have to before you move on, there, yes. sorry. What are those things that you think should be done? Because we've also had uh, during the course of your uh, submission that that, that uh, teaching the mother tongue itself has its own advantage. Yes. So, what are the kind of uh, innovations, improvement that has to be done to assist the teaching the mother tongue? Good. The first thing I would expect that if I'm having a program in mother, in, if I'm having a, if I'm having a program in mother tongue, I will have done a particular survey that will let me have the textbooks that I want to use. It's very very important, and also to train teachers that I'm going to use in this particular aspect in this particular areas. Then when I want to start, at what level am I starting this, or am I just introducing it to everybody? Just start like that. Remember, I've told you that we have the national policy on education. And the national policy on education that we still have at hand is still, in fact, the, the latest edition is 2014. We still says that mother tongue's place is still in education, but we have to use it because it has recognized the fact that if a child learns the mother tongue from home, you can't get to school and immediately you introduce the child to another language which the child cannot think. Because mother tongue that you have learned is a language that helps you to think. You are, you feel at home to do so many things in that your mother tongue. So mother tongue has its own place in education. You understand what I'm trying to say? But what I'm saying in essence is that for you to say that I want to switch everything to mother tongue, I want to say now that what are the things that I've put in place? Am I changing my official? Are we changing the official status of what? That means if I'm if, if I'm educated now in the mother tongue, is there a place for me to work? Because I'm sure now that if I'm educated in mother tongue and I want to seek for employment in your station now, what are you going to use in judging me and assessing me whether I'm employable or not? You want to know whether I can speak English or not. But if it's only mother tongue that I speak, you might not be able to have, employ me. If I want to, if I learn in mother tongue, 
all my exams that I'm conducting, are my, are my exams going to be conducted in mother tongue? Let me tell you, this student that I taught in mother tongue, it's not as if they don't know. But sometimes you discover that you have WAEC now. You conduct the exams, West African examination is not only limited to us. You conduct these examinations in English, in English language, and you have taught a particular set of students in the mother tongue. Tell me, when they are writing the exam, are you going to stay there and interpret the questions to them? So we have so many things. Are we going to have examination bodies that are going to examine these students in the mother tongue? How ready are these examination bodies? Are their certificates going to be acceptable? We are, are, we, are, we, are we educating them only for our localities? Are we giving them certificate that even when they travel, for instance now, I've been educated in mother tongue in my area here, and I want to become the uh, president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I have to go around this country and, 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 uh, and campaign. If I get to the north, is it mother tongue that I will speak there? If I get to the east, yeah, is it mother tongue? Are you saying? <laughs> so, so, so many things. Saying, so are you yes. saying it's not going to work at all? So they shouldn't bother going to that proposal or bringing it up? What I want to say is that mother tongue is not alien to us in education. Is there? There is no proposal. Personally, I've been in school. I've been, you know, involved in school so many. I discovered that. In, let me tell you the scenario that we have at hand now. So it's not a new thing. If anybody is bringing it, I don't see it as new. Over the years, for the past 30 years, I've been working in primary school education. And I discovered that now with the policy that we have at hand, we are operating things at two extreme. Policy says that at the, at, the initial, uh, at the initial state of a primary education, you use mother tongue. Three years after, switch to English language you teach. But you discover that in public primary schools, straight is straight for english in government all schools is mother tongue all true you start with mother tongue in fact you don't even not see any switch primary six they still tell you that they don't understand and you have to interpret interpret to them so at present what we are having is that we are having two sides to this particular curriculum two sides to the curriculum to the, the fact that one is on is mother tongue all true the other one is english all, all true and all these students, at the end of the day, they'll come together to write exams and find themselves in the same in the same. So, if you are bringing a policy now, you just what you want to do is that to just stamp what is already in existence. I guess what I'm saying now, what is already in existence. But remember, and I've told you that there is national policy on education. It's like you know, it's like the constitution guiding the education. So, there are so many other things that you still have to look at there. There are so many other things. Is is it's not as if those people that are that are looking at the national policy on education, they are, but you know, languages. When you have when you have a multilingual uh, situation like Nigeria, languages they have roles. There there is no way they will not consider the roles that each of these languages play in doing that. So if you now say that you want to teach me in mother tongue, are you ready to conduct all my examinations for me in mother tongue? No, uh, okay. Doctor Valadi, for yes. this policy, yes. They have told us it's going to be uh, for science and technology and, and technology. mathematics. And the reality facing us mm. and facing the world right mm. now is the world is moving towards technology. Yes. We need to compete. We need to join the race. Yes. Um, actually, yes, I was listening to a program, a documentary yesterday, and with some scientists, have they have created the moon okay. on Earth. They created something that will look at the moon and encourage people to come and live in it. Mm -hmm. Astronauts who've been to the moon give them the idea this is how it is, and they've created it mm -hmm. in the United States. So, eventually, it's going to become a tourist center. So, rather than uh, join the space shuttle and uh, fly off, you can just walk in and then you see exactly what the moon is. Okay. This is technology, this is advanced, which you will agree with me that a country like Nigeria. Also has to keto. So, those who decided that let's teach science and this thing, mm. don't you think this is the era in which they are looking at, and it will be beneficial? But you have just said it that it's easier for students to assimilate to grabs when you teach them in their mother tongue. Mother tongue yes. Uh, you see, um, what you have said is okay. It's easy. It's good for students to learn in their mother tongue, but. From what you have said now, it's not as if they are, uh, just as I have told you, what we are bringing now is in place. We have a lot of people learning in mother tongue. But it's like you have not 
I've said a particular thing now that a particular language having a particular official stamp. Well, my um, teaching in that mother tongue, we need to still have certain structure that I, that I might think we, we need to look at from a particular angle. The particular angle I'll look at it is from the technical education angle, just as we are bringing out now for education, for mathematics, for this thing. If I were to look at that, I would say, that, okay, if I have mother tongue school, where if I'm ready to learn in mother tongue, I'll go to that school. I can also have English school. Remember, this is a policy. And if you're having a policy that you want to put in place, there is no way you leave the society and the parents out of it. Most of the programs that we have uh, that we have uh, had over the years is not as if these programs are not okay. Look at the 6334 system that we're talking about that go to technical education as from this thing. It's not as if this thing, but well, parents would not want their children to follow a particular path. We still have that problem in this country. That government will look at a particular thing. Let us go this way. It will be good for us. But well, parents, they will come out and tell you that this is where they will take their children to. They will never want that child, even if the child has failed a particular at the particular stage, they will still want the child to continue like that. Why, why do you think this is so? Because, you know, because your the, the education of your child is a fundamental human right. It's not in the hands of the government. It's your right to determine that this is what I want for my child. That's not what... So, for as long as I, I can draw a program and say that this program is nice, is good, is in line with what operates in other parts of the country, but... You still have to carry the society along and convince them that this is right for. Because let me tell you, this particular, if you have read about this AFA six years project, it generated a lot of argument somewhere for Fafunwa that did that project at that time, somewhere against him. You know, a lot of parents withdrew their children from that particular, from the government school and took their children to private, um, to private schools. But at that time, it was because people envisaged that they were going to start to use mother tongue to teach their children. But in fact, in the policy now, it's still not stated that they should use mother tongue to teach. But because they felt that with this policy now, that's what government will use. A lot of them will use their children from mothers. And since then, we've been having these private schools. Okay, Ma, you've been in the education sector for so long. Yes. What do you think is the major problem for the failure or the lack of interest of the students concerning from excelling in all um, in their studies what do you think is the major problem well you can't really say i will personally i will not say that the problem is one the problems are many can you highlight them good we have problems from parents 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 education is a thing that you have to allow a child to grow on their own, you know, um, how, how do I put it now? You have to understand the ability of a particular child and let, let the particular child grow based on his or her ability. The, uh, um, uh, his or her ability. But here, what I've discovered over the years is that parents at all costs, if it means that if my child is not doing well, that child must be seen as doing well. I have to go out and buy things. I have to go out and do this. So, you as a teacher cannot really determine the ability of a particular child because they can go at any length. But let's assume that teachers are allowed to let us say, this is the ability of your child. Let this child go this way. It will be better for this child to do this. It will be better for this child to do this. But that's one. We have the problem too of teachers. Everybody is a teacher in the Nigerian context. If I don't have a job, I can go into the classroom and continue to teach. If I'm a dropout, that's when I want to come and read study education. And people, I look at people and I laugh. Sometimes when I say, all of you, you are teaching, look at the crop of teachers that they produce, and this and that and that and that. <laughs> it's a circle. It's what you send to people that they will teach. So you cannot say that uh, um, uh, uh, the teachers that you, pro if a teacher is not really good in a particular subject, then what would the teacher teach? So you have the problem of teachers because now everybody you want your child to be lawyers, doctors, and everything. Nobody wants to teach their children to be teachers. So it's only the dropouts, people that are scored maybe 180, 120, 150, come to College of Education and come and study education. And at the end of the day, they are still going there to teach our children. So we have the problem at that. And they will not and 
even public schools and private schools will take them and be given and they'll say that they want to train them and things like that and Jesus. so you have the problem there you also have the problem on the part of the student themselves this is a generation that are very lazy they are not ready to read anything on their own it's only computer and handsets and uh, music and what have you you know music that does not even have that are not even intelligent unlike in those during our days whereby when you listen to music you want to listen listen to intelligent things but just listen to things now so most of them just they find it difficult like, <laughs> and things that is just lyrics and all the like so you know that it's like this generation you know is it's it's um is is unfortunate it's unfortunate that most of the things that i see is, is most of them is like most of them is like just let me have the certificates because that's the in thing. Everybody. Then what do you understand. think should be done to correct this, to revive it? I've I've identified part of the things that should be done to revive it. I'm still going back to parents. Before you go to school, parents must devote time for their children. Education is like education is not a thing that you build overnight. It's not a thing that you build at the high institution or secondary school. Education is like laying the foundation. For instance, if I if I I want to build a two story uh, two story building, the foundation is different from if I want to build a bungalow. If I lay a foundation of a two story building, as if I want to build a bungalow, and I put another story building on top of it, the building is going to collapse. That's education. If the foundation is faulty, there is nothing you can do. There is little that you can do if the foundation is faulty. And right from the foundation, we have to know that. For instance, now. If you are learning in mother tongue, if you are learning in English language, if this attitude of these students are still like this one, there's little we can do. I get it. There's little that you can do. So I'll still say that parents has a lot of role to play. Parents must devote a lot of time to their children and know that it is important that they have responsibility. God has given them certain responsibility. They should not put all the problems on all the responsibilities on the teachers because children are just staying with teachers for maybe 10 hours or even eight hours there about, and the children are staying with them. Okay, let's look at the education sector now. Okay. Hmm. What is the major problem of um, the education sector? Do you think they're up to standard? The education sector in Nigeria. You know that <laughs> when you talk about the education sector, it has various sides, three various sides. Really, there are still students that are intelligent in this country. I'm beginning to see a country whereby acquiring education real education if you want to talk in the sense of it is expensive because it's not as if you still don't have intelligence at least go to some of these private schools you have students you know they represent Nigeria. you have students that are that are doing you know excellently well so i will not say that i will not generalize and say that our educational system is is bad or something like that one because i still see some students that are okay all right uh, dr Valage, you, yes, you also mentioned identified laziness yes as a problem with some of uh, these uh, students uh -huh. and um, I, I don't know if that is still correct but statistics and evidence has also shown that very many of these students were running away from science uh, subjects okay. and uh, hardcore uh, so i don't know if that is still uh, true but that's the information i have now if you place this two together laziness on the part of the and then uh, the difficulty in mastering uh, science and putting interest in mathematics and other science and then we look at the issue being discussed teaching in modern or modern tongue. More, 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 uh, modern tongue. Mm -hmm. and then we add the curriculum uh, to it um, I don't know how to explain, but I understand, I'm sure you understand what I mean by uh, the curriculum to it. Should we now separate them or do we match them? Teaching a modern uh, language, the same curriculum, or we just drop the idea of the curriculum and let each teacher, each student uh, set his own standard for the what you call the teaching guide. <laughs> there was a lot of nation are we going to build. Because that, that, that's the way it occurs. I, I just said it's it, it simple. You have just said it. I don't know if you no. speak any other language. That, I uh, speak English and Yoruba. I know, I'm a mother yes. language. I know. Yes. Forget the English. My mother tongue. Yes, I do. Uh -huh. I speak Yoruba now fluently. And apart from Yoruba, no other Nigerian no, language. No. So here we go. So you are handicapped, you'll be restricted. 
<laughs> even Wait, from teaching, doing let, what you like. Let me know. So why don't you just draw your own teaching guide in Yoruba and produce a student that you can take anyway? You might not be able to work like that. Let me tell you, because we are working as a nation. We are working as a nation. If you are, if I'm training, if you are training me here. You are training me to be able to survive all over the world. But the education that I'm receiving is not only meant for me to stay in Ogun State or to stay in the Yoruba speaking states. The education that I'm giving is meant for me to be able to stay all over the world, to be able to stay to stay anywhere in Nigeria and to be able to compete with my mates. For instance, before you draw a I would like to continue with that. I want to puncture, to puncture that your submission. Okay. We know the Chinese. Yes. We know the Koreans. Yes. They are among the best yes. uh, in competing internationally when you talk of technology and their business thing. I've never seen them speak, even when you have some of them understand the other languages, English, French, uh, but they still speak Chinese, they speak uh, Korean, and they are competing, they are doing their business going around the world. That is so true. are we not just uh, being receptive, recalcitrant, and shy of our own language? I wouldn't look at it from that perspective. You know, when you look at those people, you know, it's easy for us to come out. That's what I hear most times. When you go to Germany, they use their mother tongue. When you go to these, they use their mother tongue. But we have failed to look at the situation that we have and at hand in our country. In our country, can we just come out with one language? Is it possible for us to come out with one language as the official language in our country? You know, you are just looking at Yoruba as the Yoruba is in Nigeria. Igbo is in Nigeria. Ibo is in Nigeria. All of us, you know, as a Nigerian, we don't have a common language that is binding us together. Are you getting me? So if I now say that in, in, in Yoruba, speak, I want to be teaching my children in Yoruba. Yes, good. Igbo will now say, I want to be teaching in Igbo. Then, can you, can you please picture, what sort of nation are we likely to have? Then, that means, if I can't go and, okay, at the national level, if I want to go and look for a job, what, 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 what sort of language will I speak? If I want to write up, English is still the official language of the nation. I said to come together and we agree that one of our Nigerian languages will be our official. We have the official stamp we that we use. It, we pick it good. Yes. Oh, and that was the problem. This thing was raised over the years. No, no, no part of the country wants to say that. Okay. No, you can't pick your language. I have to pick mine. That is what the problem we, we have been having coming out with official language. So, can we come out with a... You can't be having official matters and be having various languages. Go to Delta. They have EPBO. They have so many languages. Shekiri and so on and so forth. Go to the North. You have... It's not only Aousa that you have there. You have so many languages there. Come down to the South here. It's just that in the South we are able to have this general Yoruba. That's where we can talk like that. So, picture the kind of country that we want to have. I gave you an, a scenario the other time. That means, if I'm taught in Yoruba or true. That means I'm restricted to my Yoruba listing. That means I can't move up in my country, not to talk of moving outside. So that's not the essence of education. The essence of education is, if I said I'm educated all over the world, people should see me as somebody, I should be able to meet with a particular um, standard. All over. But having said that, it's not as if we cannot start something like that one with the mother tongue or something. But it's fine, it's not even strange because we use mother tongue a lot in the classroom. And I think the problem that we have is that children that we have these days, just like I mentioned, they've been lazy the other time. They are not good in mother tongue that you are talking about. They are not good in English language <laughs> that you are talking about. Because you are, you see them as in, as in, is it shadow? Shadow? It's so like, it's like, it's like, I mean, what is that one? They're not communicating. So the language that they use now is like Shewa what they like to code switch or code mix. They, you hardly see them speaking. In those days, when I in those days when our this thing they taught us, if you want to speak Yoruba, you speak undiluted Yoruba, Yoruba with good accent. If you want to speak English, you drop it, you drop Yoruba, you speak English. You were taught like that. But now in the Yoruba class, Yoruba person, if abbreviations uh, uh, as in uh, sure you know, uh, what is that? So <laughs> okay, let's look at technology now. Has Good. technology blessed, uh, has it been a blessing or a curse really? And has it developed the education in Nigeria in any way? Hmm. Uh, technology is, is expected to be a blessing. Is expected to be a blessing. But remember I told you the other time that with 6334 system that we talked about the other time. The essence is that if you are not good, after this, after this, after JSS, Go to technical schools where you learn one thing or the other. 
But Nigerians say, say that, okay, how can I go to technical school when people are going to the university? I get what I'm saying now. How can I go to technical school when people are going to the polytechnic? I want to become, even if I'm not good, I want to go out, out and acquire the certificate at all costs so that people will say that this thing. It's because also in our country, we have failed to recognize people for who they are. Are you getting me now? People believe that it's only when you have attained the university education that you are accorded the respect. But it's not so. You are looking at China, you're talking about China, that they speak their language. That let's assume that going through this technical side, um, uh, um, uh, parents are willing to allow their children to go there. It's better because you have had the opportunity of developing them. You know, something will have come out of the way. Be educated All right, this is uh, still face the nation rock city 101.9 uh, sorry <laughs> i really sorry citizens for a one day break show um if you yeah. check your time you realize that uh, we are getting to that time in which we have to go for the national news but uh, if you have been following us uh, not many people will dispute that that indeed we have a teacher uh, here with us uh, this morning dr bola Ige. We have been uh, looking at um, issues uh, surrounding the planned introduction of our modern language to teach some science and mathematics in Nigeria schools and how to advance the course of uh, education. Uh, Dr. Okay, before the break, quickly, uh, let me uh, ask you this. It's important that we have to compete and not be left behind by the rest of the world. Yes. From the submission, you have also prove it that many of our students do not show interest in science and technology and which are um, other um, statistics have also shown. How do we arouse their interest? How do we move them into liking this? Uh, since 33 4 has failed or it's not working. So what do we do? Because it's important that we have to get them if we cannot use mother language okay. to attract them. Let me say this. You, have, you said something the other time that a lot of them, you have a lot of our students in humanities now, no more than in sciences. Let me say this, that in science, English is still the lamp with which our youth needs to travel far. Without it, you might not be able to travel far in the educational career. The reason why they are going into humanities is because they are not really fluent in that particular English. And with humanities, you just tell stories much. But with science, it's more technical. You need to know certain things, basic things. Raise to power this, raise to power that, do this, do that. Uh, how this. do you raise to power in your let's, let's Thank you. Thank uh, you. Yeah, yeah. Try it in English. Raise to power this, raise uh, to power that. Two, two square times uh, raise to bracket uh, minus 2.0. 2. 2. Specialist in the area of mother tongue still needs a lot of work to do before we go straight into this. In physics, how do you say atom? This and that, so that all over the world they will understand that this is what they are talking about. We still have to go and generate concepts that is relevant to science that everybody will accept. And let me tell you, you cannot limit yourself to a language, not learning another language and develop your own language. You have to learn another language. There is no language in the world that can survive alone without having borrowed from one language or the other into the into his own. The borrowing will come, will come. So if you don't learn a particular language and know the equivalent in your own language, you might not be able to have the correct concepts of that particular language. So specialists in the area of mother tongue still need to go and sit down before we now implement this. If you want to say that uh, bracket raised into power this, mm -hmm. um, what is bracket in the uh, uh, in, in modern in modern in mother tongue? What is um, uh, chi square? Right. What is chi square? What is this? What is that? In solving mathematical problems and things like that one, and be able to teach me. What is screwdriver? What is this one? How do I put it in? In technical education, what are the technical things that I use? That means, with the people that are still in technical world, like the mechanics and all that, how do they identify all these things? What do they call it and things like that? They need a lot of consultation and they still need to to come out with a lot of things. Yeah, I know 13 and 14, you see 13 and 14. 13 and, everywhere. thank you, they say 13 and 14. Mm -hmm. So what is 13 and 14? 14? What is the implication of 13 and 14? And so on and so forth. So they still need to come out with concepts that will make them understand that. When I say this, this is what it is meant in my language. Okay, so we, that need for me to to run. we need to run and take a break for the 
the national news at 10. But before then, begin to turn in your messages to the short code DAL 32120. Type rock, you leave a space, type your message, include your name, and send it to 32120. And also the Twitter handle at RockCTFM. Me of the kids, uh, Dr. Bolagi, can uh, recite and sing that song, can mime that song, he shall part, uh, he shall uh, All right, anyway, uh, there's always that argument between the old and the young ones, uh, even here, about which one is better. Is it my set or their set? Of course, and they are quick to tell me uh, computer has come. So in your days, you yeah, watch the you, you watch the black and white uh, <laughs> television. Watch now. No, we watch the, not just the television <laughs> now. You can be in the car on the road and be watching, watching television. <laughs> and in those days, television comes on by four and closes by ten or nine. All right, now it's a twenty-four hours. Thing. All right, God save us. Yes, uh, we are back. Citizens Forum on the Daybreak Show, Rock City 101.9 FM, in the city of Abekta. And I have uh, with us an educationist, a teacher indeed, Dr. Bola Ige. Together, we are looking at uh, the changing educational curriculum in our, uh, in our system uh, with special uh, reference to the planned introduction of modern language as means of teaching mathematics and sciences in our schools. Maybe a way to solve uh, many of the technological uh, laxatives that we have in the country. If we must compete with the rest of the world, we must be ready to follow their step in the area of innovations, sciences, um, and not just literature. As she has mentioned, a lot of issues have been raised, and then um, we will open the telephone lines for you, our listener, to be a part of it. Let's get your question, let's get your comments, let's get your opinion. If you differ from what you have heard so far, um, let's get to here. It will be opening the lines straight off and the other means of communication, and of course, um, get response from Dr. Ige, who is still here with us. Jane. Zero eight zero nine eight six eight seven three four four and zero nine zero nine one four six nine six seven zero are the numbers to call to be a part of the program and also the short code number three two one two zero it is type rock you leave a space type your contributions your questions your reactions include your name it's very important and then you send it to three two one two zero and also the twitter handle at rock city fm if you're not there yet go there like the page and then you're free to follow us at rock city fm all right uh, dr Bulagi, i said it uh, let's uh, teach us or remind us as says us in please you know don't uh, stay like... too long please uh, you know don't uh, have your telephone as in uh, stay too close as in where you are with our first caller hello good morning hello good morning yes good morning. morning uh yeah yeah good morning good morning sir good morning sir uh madam good morning in the house good morning sir my name is Lucia johnson Yes, uh, you've spoken and spoken well, but then I also want to say that it's never too late to start anything one wants to start. It's a challenge now. The colleges of education, the university of education we have in Nigeria, those, uh, the lecturers and the students have to come up now with third books and comparative third books, you see, in science and mathematics, so that if we say this is a spanner, let the ego and the outside the yoga man agree that this is the spanner and then they should put it in that book to teach in our mother tongue. Then I also disagree when people say Yoruba is a vernacular. I don't like it at all. It is because the Yoruba man could not speak Yoruba. That is why he term it as a vernacular. That is why the Chinese did not allow, the Koreans did not allow them to do the same thing. You see, and then also when somebody scores 180 and you call that person a dropout, you are not encouraging that person. You should rather tell that person, look, you are fitting into social place. 
to go and continue your education, maybe at the educational center or the technical school. So that person will continue. But the moment you start telling them the uh, dropout because it's called why you can only you are demoralizing the person and you are not encouraging the person to do All right, thank you. Because Approaching two minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hello? Hello, good morning. Hello, morning. Uh, good morning, Dele. Good morning, Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, good morning Prof. Uh, Dr. <laughs> good morning, uh, sir. My name is uh, Dr. Nkom. I'm calling from Ashiro. Okay, sir. Beautifully spoken, but I have some reservations. Okay, sir. Uh, and um, some comments. One is that, who are these people who are always coming to upset and disrupt our educational system with some funny, funny, 611, 641, 621, all sorts of things? I hope some academics are not becoming dishonest and they want to find a way of getting into something, Sha, or to write their PhD test. If you are doing 644 or 622, whatever, why don't you wait here for some time and then see what it goes on? By the time we start understanding the system, someone comes in with some funny, funny things. We want to start teaching our children in Chinese. We want to start teaching them in this. Look, I am Calabar. And then, if I, I'm still in the Yoruba land, so I would get, my daughter will start learning Yoruba first before going to school. Oh, come on. Please don't tell me that. I will not allow that to happen. The language I would like her to be exposed to is English, French, Chinese, Russian. All these Yoruba Igbo things. How many people speak Yoruba in the whole world? When even English is not the most spoken language. <laughs> English is not the most spoken language in the world. English, we are a subset of English. Mandarin, one. I think, I think English is that. So what is all this noise we must have to take in Yoruba and all that? Well, well, we should stop it, please. We are confusing people. Let us stop and where we are and develop on it. And if there is absolute need to change any of those things, then we will change them. Number two, ma, until we start registering teachers. As you rightly said, when you say I clap for you, ma, everybody is a teacher. If you cannot get to school, you're a teacher. If you're doing this thing, you're a teacher. And all that. Mm. Until teachers stand up and say, no to that nonsense. Nobody can become a doctor because you dropped out or somewhere. There's nothing like that. You must train and certify to be a doctor. I don't know why you don't insist on that. Until you insist on that, we have all these morals going on. Thank mm. you very much. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, thank you. Okay, we'll see, take more calls. Uh, citizens for all, 0809868734. Yes, we have you. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, also, I guess this issue has been a long drawn one. Is there government with different policies on this issue of modern terms? Is there government any issue of Yoruba or to come there? I mean, modern terms or to come there? But no implementation. The guy that talks about the uh, original uh, project of this issue of modern terms. What about the guy that talks about radicalized? Those days, 
wanted to, they were given opportunity to come up with same language, but unfortunately, they got it wrong when they wanted to uh, discover what God has not allowed them to discover. And then we are in this um, situation, we have found ourselves different tribes, different languages. Uh, but I won't say this, Mark, I think um, the ego uh, that we have, we have now, cannot afford to uh, be able to achieve for this because there are conscientious uh, reasons or public teachers or students that will be aware of the time that this type of thing will take for us to be able to gather uh, more uh, power or energy into this uh, no, no, I mean, um, probably noble um, uh, discovery that we are just going to enter into. But I believe that the constraints of time uh, just like uh, it has been done for Bible, where it was uh, in form of Greek then, but now turned English, and then somebody translated it to Yoruba. Can we have somebody, just like you have said, man, who will be able to sit down, uh, set aside the issue of time constraint or time whatever, and then do serious work? But we cannot rely on it to be used for examination. We can use it to be able to um, probably bring our children up, teach them certain things, so that, uh, like, look at what we call integration. People may, may not know exactly what integration is all about. But if we have a uh, fervent and seasoned teacher, who can be able to do this? Uh, it will take time to be able to achieve for this, and then we can all right, cover approaching two minutes. And thank you very much. Okay, thank you, too. Let's add this one to it to move away from the telephone lines to permit Dr. Blagge to give our response. Hello. 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 Good yes, morning. morning. Hello, good morning. Morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Morning, we can hear you. Uh -huh. Good morning, Mrs. Uh, Dr. Mrs. Good morning, sir. Uh, I, you are talking uh, what, what is your name, sir? My name is Akim Olitobo. Akim. Akim Olitobo. All right, thank you. Uh, we are on the verge of improving our educational system. And um, this vicious circle is still remains if we don't put up some things. Hello? We can hear you. Your two minutes is counting, actually. See, the number two that I would like to point out uh, the students, many students, they are very, very indigent. And we are comparing Nigeria with some countries like Japan, Korea, that they are very de developed. These countries, these countries are, are, are monolingual countries. And they have been using their methodologies in I don't think you can compare Nigeria with them. Um, the issue of Sakun is still remain if we don't do what is necessary to be done. Hello? Hello, I'm listening. So, uh, there are many mathematical jargons using in the classrooms. Do you think this jargon will be easily understood? That the students, when they, 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 they are sitting there in their various classes. So, another point I want to mention is that. Approaching two minutes. Okay. Approaching two minutes, sir. <coughs> okay, okay. Uh, the students then have a lot to do because they know the capability of their students. Let us do what is uh, supposed to be done. Because, hello? All right, thank you. Um, I can, okay, Dr. Okay. Mrs. Okay, thank you very much. Let me start with uh, Mr. Johnson, who said it's never too late to translate, to have um, <clears throat> mother tongue uh, textbooks. I quite agree with you. But I want to say that um, I don't think I've used vernacular in my course of talking about the Nigerian languages, I think I've used mother tongue 
so you were you were you don't have to be annoyed about that but i don't think i use more uh, vernacular i'm in language and i know what uh, vernacular means vernacular is uh, just looking down a particular language but i want to say that all the languages whether mother tongue languages they are important so we cannot use but mother tongue is what we use to describe nigerian languages one you also said that 180 marks that we should not be seen as dropout and things like that good in any exam i'm a teacher when you talk about a you talk about b you talk about c you talk about d all of them they are passes but one a is more outstanding than b than c and d that means they have grades they have grades that means if i've set a particular exam say 70 percent one is 60 percent one is um 50 percent 40 percent and what have you so when we now say that it's from 40 percent that will now pick people to come and become teachers that means we might be having we are not saying that they are dropouts but they are the, the the level at which they have entered might not be as high as a but in those days when you have people coming into teaching profession they were given incentives a lot of people were encouraged to be teachers a lot of intelligent people were there so i think we just mentioned that one alongside so we are not saying that people that have scored 180 are dropouts they are not but at least if you want to compare in terms of percentage that i've said 70 is different from 40. thank you then we talk um i quite agree with uh, dr Unkom, just i said said it everybody is a teacher in nigeria you travel to china you travel to china, germany you stay there one year two years and you see what is practice there you come to nigeria you want to change everything not going back to our past and know where we're coming from i think it's always important for us before we start anything to delve into the past because the past will help us to know what is present and be able to build on the past to develop our, our future so thank you very much for that contribution then um Teachers Registration Council, I think they have taken note of that, that teachers now register. We have registered teachers, but still, it has not stopped people that are not teachers from going into the classroom. Some people will not want to come and study education. They go to other places, but they come back and come through the back door of having PGD to come and study education, and they end up in this classroom without having all that it takes to be teachers. They are also there, they are there. Then we talk about... Um, Mr. Kaya also said, gave us his contributions about set aside some people to translate but should not be used for examination. So it's not only about translation, but at least you have agreed with me that we still need a lot to, to do in the area of sciences before we can say that we want to use the mother tongue or what have you to teach. I quite agree with you too. Then Mr. Akim Momito talked about monolingual society should not be compared with Nigeria. I think I've said a lot about that. That means we have Nigeria is a multilingual, uh, multilingual society, and whatever we practice here, we have to take uh, uh, to cognizance the language environment in Nigeria before we delve into using any of these languages at all. Thank you. Okay, we check um, the messages and tweets now. We have um, quite a number of them, starting with this very one. Not all Bado music are not intelligent. Okay, kindly play. Yeah, I'm sorry if I've offended anybody. I don't really know what Bado means. That's the truth. So, I just hear them say it. So. Okay, he says you should play Letter to Millie by Bado to see the intelligence in it. Yeah, oh, okay. Okay. okay, I agree with you. <laughs> don't let us say <laughs> Evangelist Oriola Akinyemi from Adibe. We cannot do without English language in mathematics and science. Yet, we should avoid killing our language with it. Let the teachers sing every subject to their students' brain by explaining it in the language they will understand too. I felt ashamed seeing the foreign lecturer teaching students in Yoruba language. Moving to the next one, Mr. Daly, good morning. During 2015 election, all politicians from Igoland and Hausa spoke their mother language to campaign for votes only the yoruba politicians spoke english <laughs> <laughs> they spoke english for votes that is from beyond <laughs> right here in Abokta. good day good people the police of um, education that government is introducing this policy. day the policy yeah is introducing these days a uh, product of self-interest can mother tongue in science bring a better education in nigeria that's a question from felix which school is dr bolaigi teaching <laughs> okay we would also be glad to have a number for consultancy purpose thanks on loud peku sent in that one then checking the tweets now we have um 
mayor of God. He still has the right to, okay. Oluwashegun Sam Alalade, our multi languages will be the barrier to this policy. And I strongly disagree with policymakers on this. Cherson, Dr. Bola Igeshi, please talk on Wazubia, that is, possibility of Nigeria having her own official language. Then, yeah. All right, since she's in the language, uh, uh, all right, uh, the yeah, possibility yeah. of having. Uh, Yes. Benjamin Da Vinci, Dr. Ige has been fantastic. Her submissions are hard to fault, but I beg to disagree with her on certain things. One, I believe we need to codify knowledge of science and technology to local languages to make it easier to access by artisans. This will enable them use the latest ideas in fashioning the homegrown solutions to our very local problems like erosion and rust. Two. English can be taught as a second language starting at the senior secondary school level like it is done in Japan and China. Then three, how many nations um, which doesn't teach science in local language has won a Nobel Prize in science? Translating and codifying will enable an environment that supports scientific innovations and research instead of making heroes of terrible singers. Uh, languages can borrow heavily from foreign ones like it has always done. Electron can be Eya Kekere Onino or Electron. It's trying to codify. Yes, yes. Yes. Is that a word? Uh, <laughs> let, let's just uh, hold on there. Okay. Uh, because there are some uh, questions, issues raised there that I yes. consider that uh, important, mm. okay. uh, Dr. Gay. And I have your response to Okay, I think most of the things I listen to are just comments agreeing with what I've said. But somebody mentioned Wazobia official yes. language. Well, Wazobia official language have Wa, Yoruba, Zo, Ibo, Bina, Ausa. You get to a particular state that will be stuck in language like that. Well, language is not built like that. You get to a particular state that will be stuck. So you cannot really have. So, what of people that are not Wazobia in Nigeria? They are there. Remember I told you when we were talking about the multilingual no, I think what this person is saying that is... That we can come out with the Nigerian yeah, language. We can call that That's what I'm saying. Acceptable. It's not so now. it doesn't have to be the word, the zone. So the, the, yeah, yeah. Yes, what I'm saying is that, okay, if I pick Yoruba and she is Igbo, will Igbo accept Yoruba that you should be the this thing? Or if I pick Yoruba and Igbo, will I also accept that we should not pick their language? Just let us, uh, let us look at it from that perspective. I think this argument was on... Over over the years, over the years, just when we're talking about this mother tongue, 1976 in the 70s, yeah, that's actually the Wazobia yes, thing where the Wazobia thing came from. No sect of the country was ready to accept. In fact, you discover that even these three Nigerian languages that we have we have um, we have recognized, people from the Niger Delta, they will still say that they use Pidgin. They don't use any of these languages. They use Pidgin instead of these Nigerian languages to teach. Even, even as their second language. Even as their own second yeah. language. Even as their own Nigerian language. They use Pidgin because they have so many languages in that particular area. So coming out with a particular language that we have our own, I think it might be a very difficult one to come in in Nigeria. And let me say this one. English is likely to stay with us forever. Well, what of the other one? Those of you are in the education system, why don't you have a code? for these um, science uh, subjects. You say that, so, okay. Why can't we develop it? That so why can't those of you who are in the education sector take it as an assignment, a research work? Look, that, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Look, it's not as if you cannot come out with Look, when, when the 6334 system where uh, the Yoruba, this thing was a um, uh, Ford Foundation project of the University of Ukraine, it was funded. You discover that come bringing people together to come and do this kind of work Nobody will want to work in Nigeria now without being remunerated. Hmm. So, if you are, nobody will want to work without being, I can tell you that, because I'm involved in research and so many things like that. So, nobody will want to work in Nigeria. Too. So, people should come together, but who is ready to champion people that will come together to say that, good, come together, let us have, there is no way, there's only the people in the mother tongue that will come together. That means scientists too will be involved. If I say at all, what's the equivalent of at all? In Yoruba, in, in, in Yoruba language, you are in physics, describe atom for me. What does it do? When I talk about molecules, what does it do? 
describe molecules for me. So it might not be an easy task for people that are just in that mother tongue to come together. But people in sciences, people in math, chemistry, physics must come together so that when they want to say that, okay, describe for us. What that does it? Yeah, the one that will now idea. break it into. And you discover that most of this Yoruba word that you do that, instead of having a word, they normally have sentence. <laughs> yeah, that's like the person, yes, yeah, yeah, the sentence the phrase, is not the word, sentence. Yeah, yeah. Yes, there's a difference between a sentence and a word. Yeah, so when you are teaching, there, these are things you have to be economical with words. You have to be economical. Even so, when you are writing. Thank yes. you. And you might need to ask the question that why exactly is it that it's difficult for us to have a word that we can use because it's foreign to us. Because this particular thing, they are foreign things to us. So it might not be easy for us to get one word that will that will suit him into their own in, in, into the to, to suit in into the situation in which the word is is used. So really is a complex thing. But I will not say that it is late. People can still come together because at least it will encourage even in the policy recognize that this coming together, teaching in the mother tongue, we encourage textbooks to come up. We encourage people. You know, to have, so all the researches now they have been over over flooded. But I would have expected that people in the area of language, mother tongue, come as some people did it just as somebody said, translated Bible from a particular thing to the, so in, in fact the white people were the first. Mrs. Clay Kilham in the 1813 was the first person to teach in mother tongue, to, to educate people in the mother tongue, using mother tongue to educate the use the during the time of the missionaries. They used the mother tongue. And at that time, he, she was so happy that she was able to teach people in their own language that they will understand. So it's not it's not a strange thing. It's not something out of place for people to learn in their own language. But just as somebody said, and just as I have said earlier on, multicultural, multilingual multi situation of the, of the Nigerian system is going to be, you know, is not going to encourage us to, to go find this mother tongue that we are talking about. Mm. <laughs> well, let's continue. Okay, Garb. Gab Kunli, thank you, Doctor. How do you see the introduction of the free feeding and the inconveniences the students experience, like sitting on the floor, overcrowded classroom, lack of qualified teachers, and so on? Now, does that go with our topic? It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> but it's still under education. Uh, That's why he raised that. Topic. Mm -hmm. e Gunjobi Ganyu. Nigeria is a multilingual country using mother tongue language to teach sciences may be very difficult, but the eternal day, teaching and learning mathematics and other sciences will forever remain an academic exercise as far as Nigeria is concerned, period. Egun Jobiganyu, how many students are proficient in their mother tongue? I believe combination of both English language and mother tongue should be encouraged. Then, doctor, can you be a consultant to my intending school? <laughs> 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 okay, right. okay, Kalawale Joseph. Ma, I totally disagree with you. Okay. If this can work in other countries, yes, it can work in Nigeria. Only if you and I support this call. Let us appreciate what we have. That's from Kalawale Joseph. My, my good man, maybe you need to also react to that. In what okay. way, in what, what form uh, will the support come from? Okay, then. I'm moving to the next message. Good day, good people. Okay, the same message from Felix. Um, we have this one. The subject of mother tongue as a means of teaching is being debated because we have failed to do the right thing in our educational system. I stand to be corrected. The 2014 National Policy on Education that is supposed to still be in operation clearly states that the means of teaching at the primary level of education should be in the language of the environment where the school is situated. But this is not in practice because we have failed to implement the dictates of that policy, amongst other things. How I wish we have the right set of people to man our educational system. Dr. Chris Omotosho sent in that lengthy one. You want to say something uh, um, what well. Dr. Chris has said? Well, it's what uh, Dr. Chris has said. The policy 2014, yes, is still in operation. Please read it. He's not saying that primary school should be in mother tongue. He's saying that mother tongue should be used at the initial stage of the primary education system. And at the last stage, English should be, should be used. That means he's saying that primary one, primary two, primary three, mother tongue is used and English is taught as a subject. 
But primary four is assumed that at that particular stage, students is expected to have been to have mastered English. So teachers will now start to use English to teach. So it's not saying that throughout primary education, English, sorry, mother tongue should be used as a means of um, education. That's not what the policy says. But even with that policy, which we have discussed earlier, mm -hmm. Dr. Ige, mm -hmm. um, if mother tongue is being taught, primary one mm -hmm. and two, mm -hmm. let's say you are, mm -hmm. okay, Ijevu, mm -hmm. Even Yewa, when you have the call Yewa, you have your worries. Mm. Uh, how do they, how are we going to blend this? Well, you see with the Yoruba now, we have a common Yoruba. We have a, you have a standard Yoruba. I will not say common. The standard Yoruba, the standard Yoruba is such that, you know, uh, it has been documented. It's not, it's different from dialects. The standard Yoruba is different from dialect. If I'm a Yoruba speaking person, I have to master the main Yoruba. The standard Yoruba. So, so I'm not expected to be using my dialect, dialect to teach. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm not expected okay. to be using Because uh, really, the reality of this, uh, let, let me give an example. Our former president, yes. Olusha Gobasan, does not really speak Yoruba. Mm -hmm. When he wants to speak the mother tongue, he said, but he speaks all the time. Yes. Uh, and we have people like that who even find it difficult you know, to speak more than the it's, Yoruba. It's, it's, it's possible. It's possible you have that. You know that now, Baba, now, you must have mastered English well. You understand? Imagine, there are people that you know that at that time you be in the boarding school, you only in time, you so the only in the, in the boarding school at that time you you communicate in the English language, you make use of English language all the time. Then your environment, you hardly see people with standard Yoruba because standard Yoruba has not developed at that time. You have the people that will speak the pure your dialect. So it's possible now for you to master the foreign language and your dialect. All right, let's uh, add more to each of the messages. Okay. The idea of the mother tongue in teaching, learning in Nigeria is a welcome idea, but its implication will be difficult in view of many languages. The important thing to do is to be serious and consistent with our educational policy. Our leaders are determined in this country to destroy our educational sector in order to promote their private school businesses. Thank you. <laughs> Kenny, addition of Ashiro, sent in that one. Adekunle, Adekunle Rofi on this one. Using the native languages as a medium of communication in the country where there are many languages will be very cumbersome. Ma, do you agree that the problem we have in Nigeria today was caused by the so-called English language? We neglected our language and appreciated the foreign language. Kolawali Joseph sent in that one. Abuola AAA, I learned basic algebra in the late 60s in Yoruba and our teachers used textbooks like Lacombe written in English and that was where I picked interest in mathematics. My father encouraged me to, and so to be able to teach sciences in the mother tongue, we must first of all have a common acceptable language for which concepts in sciences and mathematics will be coded and defined. It cannot be a bread and butter business. It is worth doing, but the government must be very serious. That's from Agbola AAA. Then if we invent any meaningful thing in Yoruba that will benefit the whites, they will learn our language. For example, Ifa Oracle. That's from Jacob from Abelkuta suggesting that one. On the tweets, we have um, Ajayi Oluwa Shegun. I think we all need to appreciate our mother tongue first. If this can be done, then we will be on the right track. Olushion Ayola Umar. Every teacher must be able to translate what he or she teaches in his or her own mother tongue. Mathematics and science should be taught like that. And I teach international exams, but I do it better by teaching in the mother tongue to translate mathematical problems. It's always been helpful. Then Akoride Kamil Adibayo, mother tongue or not? Putting right people to administer and formulate educational policies should be our priority. That's it for the messages and tweets for now. All right, let's give two opportunities for the uh, those who want to use the telephone line. You will let uh, we are almost uh, winding now, so we can add on a bit. Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, Mrs. Good morning, sir. How are you, ma? I'm fine, thank you. I'm um, Taiwan, you know, you're from South Kona area, in Georgia town. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Johnson was saying uh, 
for talking about vernacular. Let me take you back. Yes, when I was in primary school in the in the fifty yes, during the during the pre primary speech, uh, you dare not speak Yoruba. The teachers will tell you you are speaking vernacular. They find you ten naira for one Yoruba to speak. And we learned, I later learned that vernacular means the language of the barbarians. Is it barbarians talking thousands? <laughs> it was our people that killed Yoruba language. Ah, we want to start. Where do we start? How many of our children can recite this, this, this uh, Yoruba sound? Any? I doubt this Mr. Adela you can recite F I J Jo So they can do hundred. Time will not pass. This is again. We have to start nicely. Yes, sir. We have to tell our teachers. Look, how many of our teachers can recite uh one, two, three, eight, 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 eight. I know, they cannot. So years ago I was I was I All was, right, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I'm two minutes. I was doing a GS3 uh, a a a student. I was going to recite uh, a Yoruba numeral kini. He was not able to. All right, so thank you. I think we have to start nicely. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, okay, sir. let's take the last call, obviously. Hello. Uh, hello, morning. Hello. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Yeah, morning. morning. All right, so I'm not in the in our modern language. I don't see how that is going to be. Oh, I want to speak in modern language. So, he or she won't understand our modern language. I will be fast. We will make our modern language. When you see, whichever thing with the students, important like English. Once you have English in SSC, if you don't have English in SSC, the results are not complete. The whichever language you pick, whether it's Ibo or Yoruba or Aosa, if you don't have it, the SSE is not, just not complete. Then you have to go back and see for that exam. Then the student will take the data, you know, very, very important. And you must pass it. That's what I want to learn most. But especially in that, I don't know how you want to see calculus or those kind of things in West. I don't know how to be sound funny. So to me, I will prefer if you make it compulsory, you must pass it. All right, then, thank you. Um, that will be the last call. Uh, we know we will no longer have enough time for that. Okay, uh, Dr. Gay. Okay, uh, Mr. Kola Wale asked me, Do I agree that the problem we have in education in this country is English? Well, I would say no, because when we talk about the formal education system, it's even in English, it was brought to us, it was introduced to us in English. In English uh, in English language. So our formal education that we have in our country did not start with the English language. So most of these things were introduced to us in their own language. So with the body, what I think is that let us learn to follow the policy. Uh, Mr. Ayobode, sir, you mentioned about the vernacular and so on. I think I've explained concerning vernacular the other time. We did not. That the students can count one, two, three in English language or Yoruba language is not a way to measure whether they are really whether they are really educated or not, or whether they, are, they can master, they can, that they can, because they are not assessed in that and all. But on that note, I want to say here that all the languages that we have in our educational sector, they have roles that they play. Roles, let us know that languages have roles that they play in a particular society that we have, that is a multilingual like ours. Languages are not competing with one another. The moment you start seeing that this language is competing with this one, I'm not doing this one with you, the language will not be able to play the role. And if the languages are not allowed to play the role that they have assigned to them to play in the national policy on education, we'll just be going forward and backward because language is very important for us in the classroom. It's a language we teach it as a subject. We also use it as a medium of communication in the classroom. So we have to know that in Nigerian situation, we have the mother tongue, we have to allow it to play its role. We have the second language situation, which is the official language that has been used in the Nigeria, and that has not changed. We have to allow it to play its role. And we have to have the foreign languages. We have to allow them to play their role. Languages are not competing. 
let us allow them to play their role so that we can have a better society. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I must say thank everybody who has been a part of it. I must thank our guest again. Uh, you will know that we brought a teacher here, indeed, a teacher, not a lecturer, even though she works. Uh, with the Federal College of Education Language Department yes, English, and, uh, English. So uh, for those of you who also asked that question where she is, she's from the Federal College of Education. We appreciate everybody. Tomorrow by the grace of God we'll be back for a fresh package on the Daybreak Show. Daily I address my name. God bless you all. God bless Nigeria. God bless Rock City. And I am Chene Igwe. Good morning.